Hello fellow book nerds and welcome back to my channel and today I'm finally reviewing my first book. <laughs> I wanted my first book review to be a Hall of Fame book, one of my all-time favorites, and it just so happened I did a reread of it, getting ready for the next book coming out next week. So it was perfect timing with wanting to film my first book review and reading the book. So it honestly was a coincidence. And this book, first book review is going to be about I Dare You by Chantal Tessier. Get a good shot. So for those who have Kindle Unlimited, this is on there. And it's book one of, as I know right now, a three book series. Like I said, the second one will come out next week, April 25th, but it does not end a cliffhanger. So you don't have to worry about that. But it, the next one comes out next week. So who cares? And I will link both in the bottom box below you, the first one and the pre-order for, it's called I Promise You. So, and the third one is, wait, I Dare You, I Promise You. And the third one is If You Dare. Okay. So I would put this book in the high school darker romance because the characters are seniors and there's no, for trigger wise, there's no cheating. There's a little bit, there is talk of like sexual assault, but it's all in the past and it doesn't get into too detail. So I know that might bother some people, but that's pretty much it. No, like I said, no cheating, no other man, other woman drama. So feel free to jump in. You don't have to worry about any of those things happening. So let's just get into what the book's about. So this story is about Austin and Cole and Austin gets sent to live with her father and her stepmother Celeste in Oregon. And that first night she's there, she meets Cole, seeing him and his friends commit a crime. Who said a felony, but like, okay, commit a crime. And he find and Cole finds her and ultimately blackmails her to keep her quiet. But she proves early that she can't keep be kept quiet and kept down and doesn't take orders from people. And that's ultimately the base of this entire book and their relationship is sorry, I've an itch, is these two strong-minded characters butting heads for a fight of power and just how stubborn they are and it's not a bully romance because cole's not essentially bullying her maybe in certain ways but she doesn't take it and that's ultimately why i loved this book is the character austin she's probably the strongest heroine i have ever read about in a book and she's my favorite because she's not obnoxious with her strength. She's not obnoxious with just herself in general. She's strong, she's fierce, she's confident, but all in the realms of, and all the like level of like normal and good, if that makes sense. I just, I'm not a fan, and this sounds bad saying as a female, I'm not a fan when a female is written in a book. I mean, when she's overly confident and like she knows she's hot shit and, all the guys love her and she's like almost obnoxious with her confidence and I, I'm just not a fan of reading that in a girl but Austin is none of those things she's strong like I said she's strong she's powerful but she's not afraid to show weakness and she does in this book when it when Cole pushes her too much because he's obsessed with power Cole's character is stubborn one thing i did not notice the first time i read this is how stubborn he is like reading him the sec the second time reading it he didn't really even come to terms with how he felt like truly felt towards austin toward the end of the book i was like god damn i do not remember that but he is stubborn and just has you know a darkness in him and she kind of feeds into that darkness but at the same time tames it for him so i love them both separately i love them together as characters the book is mostly about, like it said, it's those two. There's a lot of ba uh, secondary characters. I said bad characters. Secondary characters. Like there's Cole's f group of friends, the Sharks. And in one of them, Kellen is clearly the, you show, is clearly the vil one of the villains of this book. Where, he, I, you, without giving too much away, He's not happy about Cole bringing Austin around for their groups and their meetings. And Kellen definitely shows his dis disinterest and distaste toward Austin. So a lot of the book is wondering, like, what's his angle? What's he getting at? And Austin's father. He's kind of the other victim. And I mean, a little bit Cole's father, but it's mostly Austin's father. And Cole clearly hates Austin's father. And so does she. But it's all about like, why does he hate him? What is 
he have on him? What's his end game with him? And where does Austin come into play with her father and Cole and that whole little triangle? So there's a lot of kind of blackmailing and games and just darkness going around on in this book. But it's not too dark, you know, it's I've definitely read darker books that maybe can make you feel uncomfortable, a little squeamish, depending on your level of where you like them, but no need for this book. So I was a little hesitant to actually to do a reread. This is only the second book I've ever done a reread of in my entire life. I'm not really big into them, not because I don't like to. I just, I always end up choosing like a new book versus a reread. You know, it always ends up winning over. But with this channel, this is giving me an excuse to actually reread books I've been dying to reread again and love. So 2019, year of the rereads. That's the goal this year. I was hesitant to read it because like I said, it was one of my favorite books of all time after the first read. And I didn't know if rereading would take the magic out. It would, you know, because I knew where the character's end game was, what the end game story was. So I didn't know if it would make the book feel too, not predictable, because obviously I knew, to, you know, like, ugh, I know where this is going, not believable, blah, blah, blah. But I actually ended up loving it even more because of the fact I knew what was going to happen, like to a T. It made me focus more on the characters' developments and them each individuals as and as well together. For example, I didn't remember Cole being so possessive, and I love that in Mills, in the books, I love, hearing when they get like super jealous and possessive but not over the top too much but he was the realistic amount of possessive if that makes sense so you got to see his growth in that sense and i don't th i honestly think i'm i don't know if i missed it or i didn't remember it or i was too focused on what his end game was to actually see what was written right there in front of my face that he really really did care about austin but was in denial with it so because of the second reread, I got to see that and that made me love him even more. But this book is amazing. This is honestly everything you can want in a book. It's got your angst, your jealousy, your possessive, hot scenes, strong male and female characters, overall great story, and some heart pounding moments at the end, with a little bit of a, with some little twists. So I would go and read this today. So now at this point in the video, if you, I'm just going to briefly talk in spoiler. If you do not like spoilers at all, or you know, you don't want to hear them. Now you would click out of the video, get out. If you have read the book and you want, I'm curious what I'm going to talk about in spoilers, or if you haven't read it and you actually like spoilers, because that's the whole point of this, of what I'm, how I'm, how and why I'm doing this, then stick into the, stick with me here in the video. So if not, goodbye. Okay, so I don't have many spoilers to talk about in this, but I do want to say, I remember the first time I read this, when I read that final chapter, I legit thought she was going to die. I mean, she kind of did until Cole gave her CPR, but like this was the first Chantel Tessier book I've ever read, so I didn't know her style and maybe killing characters is her MO. So I'm reading it and I'm like, this could like mean she legit died. You know, I mean, like maybe it was like Cole's whole journey to meet her and change, change his life and help him get out of that funk from the car accident with his friends and meet Austin and lose her. <laughs> but I mean, that's just evil. And I know not a lot of authors do that, but I legit was like, she might actually die. But luckily it didn't like set in because you just read that it happens so quickly. And by the time it happens and she reveals that ultimately she lived, it's like five pages, so you read them so fast, you don't even have time to emotionally react, but I legit thought she was gonna die. Also, the one thing I was truly surprised with in this is that Cole never slept with Celeste, like Austin's stepmother, that it was always Kellen, even like going way back, because Cole was always so close with her, like with Celeste, and I get Celeste was trying to be, trying to be a second mom to Lily, but I maybe that's just like me stereotyping, you know, the hot young stepmother. And I've read other books where the hero did sleep with the stepmother, and that ultimately, not it ultimately like hurt the relationship with the heroine. But maybe 
you know what actually now it just clicked in my head it literally just clicked in my head the whole reason why she maybe had Cole not sleep with him because Celeste is the reason Cole's mom died and that's like a whole other level of twisted if he did have a past relation like sexual relationship with her and then he found out that she was the, like he slept with his mother's killer because he ultimately made peace with the fact that his mom's death was an accident and there's nothing he could do. But then to find out that Celeste was his, like pushed his mom down the stairs and he slept, if he, if he slept with her, that would have been a whole other level to make that, this book, like make Cole more, <laughs> more darker and worse than what actually happened. I guess that would be way too, messed up because there's already enough going on with his character so i hmm. you know when you have that light bulb just go off in your head <laughs> that that's what i just had happen cool and the other thing i can think of that i'm super curious about is this second book for um i promise you i'm so honestly like i've seen the spoilers i've seen like Chantel on her Facebook group talk about it but I'm honestly really confused on what it's about because this book is both Cole and Austin's perspective and the this new book that she said you had to read I dare you first and it's what she said it's Cole Deakies and um not Kellen the other one um I'm blanking hold that thought people Okay, it's Bennett. <laughs> I could not think of that, I was blanking. So the next, I promise you, is Cole, Deaky, and Bennett's perspectives. But she hasn't been clear of what the timeline is. Like, are we just rereading parts of I Dare You? Or is it after I, I Dare You? Because if it's parts of I Dare You, or if it's, you would think if it was actually I Dare You, just rewritten for different points of view. You wouldn't have to read this one first, but she said you do have to read this one. So what does that mean? I don't know, she was very vague. She's been very vague, but maybe there's a reason she's been very vague on what I promise you is about. But I'm excited because it's only a week away. Maybe, I don't even know what today's day date. I, I think it might be a week tomorrow it comes out. But I'll be reading that one right away. So that's all I really have to talk about in the spoilers. If you hung around this long, thank you. Uh, I'll be honest, this was actually a really, this was much harder to film than I thought. This was my first review and I didn't realize how all over the place I was gonna be and how out of organized I had to refilm this more times than you could probably count. Like stop, redo, stop, redo, pause in this video. It was just, this was kind of, kind of a nightmare to film, but now I know what this entails. And hopefully I, hopefully, realistically, and hopefully, I will get much better at this, much smoother, maybe more organized. I can try notes, but I just keep, I don't like keep looking down because I like, I was doing with the book. It just drives me crazy. And you're probably wondering like, why do my eyes keep going down there? So I don't really want to do notes and I don't want to sound scripted, but I also don't want to be all over the place. So I got to find a good balance. Again, it was only my first review. And I just so desperately wanted it to be good because of how much I love this book and respect her, this author's writing and wanted to give it a good review. But also this was setting the tone for the rest of my reviews. But hopefully maybe I can look back at this one months from now and be like, what were you doing? You're a hot mess. Because that meant I improved. So I will say goodbye for now. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in my next book review. So happy reading. Goodbye.